Welcome back to another episode of the College Weekend Wrap-Up. I'm Vinny Servino, College Supervisor, and I'm joined by Brian Sikowski, National Scouting Supervisor. Brian, how are you tonight, man? I'm great, buddy. I'm great. Ready to be talking to some college baseball. Yeah, so it was a good weekend college baseball. You know, uh, a lot of exciting things happened. Mm -hmm. Uh, Brian was actually on hand at Michigan State, Indiana, for two of the three games of that series. So, Brian, you want to talk a little bit about what you saw? Yeah, um, I saw the first two games of the IU at MSU series, like you said. Indiana won both games I was at. Michigan State won today to salvage one. Um, was kind of a dominating Indiana performance. They won like 8-2 to two and 10-4 to four in the games that I saw. Um, it was kind of a cold, windy weekend, so like not super fluid, explosive baseball being played. Um, but Indiana didn't have any problems hitting fastballs. Uh, I think that was something that you can really take away. Uh, and their pitching staff looks pretty good. Like, obviously, I saw McCade Brown on Saturday. He's a guy that you and I had pretty high up our draft board heading into the season and, and looks like he's a guy even rising from that. Hammer curveball, like one of the better pitches in college baseball. Big righty, can get into the mid-90s. Just It wasn't a fantastic look that I had. He sprayed the fastball some, um, but the quality of the breaking ball is really, really strong. And uh, he competes, and, and you can kind of see it when he – when he kind of like gets upset and like has yep. to rear back, then like all of a sudden it's like 96, 96, 85 mile an hour hammer. And it's like, Oh, okay. Now I get it. Um, yeah. Well, we've yeah. seen enough baseball. Sometimes you just need a little ticked off. Right. Exactly. Um, and we, I've seen that from guys over the years, like one that stands out is Zach Thompson a couple years ago, Kentucky yeah. like, gave up a base or a couple base hits in the first inning. And then, you know, like you, you watched him kind of get upset. And then from there it was, lights out um some similar stuff with brown there they, their pitching staff is really good top to bottom saw a handful of their relievers obviously saw tommy summer on friday um and they the offense just doesn't quit man they ambush fastballs like that's the approach like that's what Derek simmons their hitting coach wants to do it's ambush fastballs over out over the heart of the plate and not let breaking balls get to them and um, they saw a couple guys, Mason Erla on Friday from MSU, and then Sam Ben Scooter on on uh, Saturday, who who throw good breaking balls, and they had success with those breaking balls. But they only had success in the at bats where Indiana didn't first ambush a fastball. So you're kind of seeing like, what's the point of all the strikeouts if they have 12 hits already? That was kind of an interesting little look. But yeah, man, I, I think Indiana's kind of a them along with maybe a couple others, kind of. A, the first quarter of the season in the Big Ten have really kind of established themselves as, as the group to beat. Yeah, obviously, you know, Indiana's top ten team in our rankings, and then we have Michigan who's right outside of that. Uh, had a little bit of a weird line of this week for Michigan, but you look at those teams along with the upstart teams, kind of like a Rutgers or a Northwestern, mm -hmm. Maryland showing out well early in the year. So certainly a competitive Big Ten. Iowa off a massive series win this weekend. Yep. Um, it, it'll be a competitive Big Ten, I think, for the rest of the year. Yeah, no doubt. I, I think it's Indiana, Michigan, and Nebraska right now. Sure. Like, really, you know, and, and like you said, Northwestern's been been somewhat of a surprise. Like, they're no one expected them to be bad, but they're good. And, the, you know, like, that's obviously a positive thing. Um, Rutgers is the surprise. Uh, that That's a team that's playing really well. They're around 500. Like, has not been a competitive baseball team much since they joined the Big Ten however many years ago. Um, so that's exciting to see, especially I know you being a northern New Jersey native, I'm sure is excited to see the, the State College of New Jersey successful in baseball. Um, but yeah, man, I, I think it's Indiana, Michigan, Nebraska right now. And I just saw Indiana. They're playing really well. Michigan's just loaded with veterans, even though a lot of them are grad transfers. It's just a lot of experience playing every day. Um, they have a very talented pitching staff. And Nebraska has been fun, I, you know kind of silently Spencer Schwellenbach's been a been one of the funner stories of college baseball like the starting shortstop was hitting over 300 with some power also throws 99 and closes like that's a really cool thing that we really only see in college baseball but um so hopefully he pops up a little bit more as the season goes on and we can get him a little bit more into the the national spotlight so to speak sure 100 uh switching gears a little bit here three massive sweeps in the SEC uh, headlined by Mississippi State and Arkansas, a top three matchup that the Razorbacks were able to sweep the three-game series. Florida goes to South Carolina and gets swept by the Gamecocks. And then Tennessee sweeps LSU in, in a doubleheader that had to finish today. Mm -hmm. So three big SEC sweeps. Uh, definitely shakes up the top 25. 
you know, we were talking a little bit about beforehand, Sack. This kind of raises the question of who is the team to beat in college baseball? Who is actually really good? I, I don't know. I mean, it's either like no one or everyone. Right. You know, so like, I, I don't know, man. I, I think it's, you know, you have Vandy at number one. I don't think you can move Vanderbilt. You have Arkansas at number two. I, I think that that's a pretty clear cut number two. I think Ole Miss making a really big statement and, and obviously having a great season so far as well. Those kind of feel like the three right now. I, you know, I, I'll defer to your expertise, but certainly the three in the SEC with maybe like a Texas Tech hanging around, something like that. Well, Texas Tech is, uh, you know, this is something I was going to touch on a little bit later. The Big 12 has been really, really good. Ever since Texas Tech lost, got swept in that opening weekend series in Arlington, they've been arguably the best team in college baseball. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they did it again this past weekend with a sweep of USF. Uh, they jump all the way up to number five. They're they're a really good team right now, along with Texas, who took care of business, and TCU, who swept Baylor and mm -hmm. such moves very close. I think they come in at number 11 or 12, so they're really close to the top 10 as well. And the Big 12 has kind of solidified those three teams, along with some Oklahoma State hanging around. Mm -hmm. uh, they'll probably be back in the rankings at some point this year, but sure. very competitive Big 12 to start out the year. And you're seeing like a more of a like okay the the big 12 beats the crap out of each other but they like win two out of three the sec just keeps sweeping each other and we have even less we have even less of an idea <laughs> yeah, it's i mean there's no other way to put it it was a bad weekend for florida yeah um, if you're mississippi state those were three games that were close but again like florida you got to be able to salvage one of those games especially with how close they are, you know, uh, how close those two teams are, how crazy the fan bases are, and also Mississippi State being at home. Right. They lost a series of Duty Noble, so. Um, but besides that, you know, the ACC is kind of solidified, too. Louisville and Georgia Tech seem to be the two top teams in that division, along with some craziness, of course, too. Virginia Tech keeps winning. Pitt and Florida State entered the rankings and lost this week. So there's a lot of uh, moving parts in that division, it feels like. Uh, and the ACC, that's such a great story with Virginia Tech, right? You know, like this this school that you don't you don't see win very often, or or not have this like sustained kind of reaching towards an ACC championship level success. Like that's an awesome story. Those are my favorite stories every year. Um, so that's cool. That's fun to watch. But other than that, like I, I think we kind of could have seen Louisville and Georgia Tech as far as running that conference before the season, don't you think? Yeah, I agree. You know, we had Louisville ranked number two in the country. Uh, I believe we had Georgia Tech in the teens, but we were we were high on them just because of their young talent, their their freshman sophomore bats, the really physical team. And then you had a guy like Brant Herter back to the equation. That's a true Friday night ace, a guy who every start that he goes out there and proves his health is not only a boon for Georgia Tech, but his draft stock continues to go up as well in that regard. Definitely. Speaking of draft stock, you touched on Florida. I mean – it's kind of a problem with Fabian now, isn't it? The swing and miss. It's kind of a problem. Yeah, it's something that, uh, you know, he'll have to address. But it, it seems like he's been very, um, very hot and cold. Mm -hmm. You know, SEC co-player of the week last week. This week he goes 0 for 12 with 11 strikeouts, 10, 10 strikeouts, something like that. It's it, it, He's definitely going to have to get some more consistency if he wants to go in the top five. Um, mm -hmm. I, I still think he's probably a solid first-round pick. But – you know, coming into the year, he could have been 1-1. There was some conversations about that. Now it's like, will he go in the top 10? Will he go in the top 20? And questions that just kind of seem to trickle and onward. Right. right. No doubt about it, man. Hopefully he finds that consistency and makes our jobs a little bit easier. So speaking of those three SEC sweeps, obviously, the one that we didn't touch on might have been arguably the most dominant, which was Vanderbilt sweeping the zoo. Mm. And, uh, you know, we're going to talk your head off about this, but Kamar Rocker and Jack Leiter, once again, looking very sharp. Leiter, in particular, up to 16 no-hit innings in a row now. Unbelievable, man. Uh, and you and I are going to, obviously, in the next couple weeks, go uh, go back into the draft lab and, and cook us up another draft list, draft board. Um, and we're going to have a discussion. We're going to have an argument. We're going to have a, a decision to make about what who's one, who's two. Is it Leiter or is it Rocker? I think you could maybe make the argument for Jordan Lawler that high, but other than that, like I don't think there are anybody, anybody, anybody else who's really kind of made that case as a top two pick. 
Um, so we're going to have that discussion. And it's so wild that they both play for Vanderbilt. That's absolutely unbelievable. Um, and, and it feels like it's not talked about enough, and yet that's all you hear about. Um, but, yeah, unbelievably dominant, both of them, and, and lighters on a streak that I, I know that we've seen it before because he hasn't broken the record yet technically, but I surely have never seen it before. So I, <laughs> truly exciting. Uh, some other minor notes, uh, La Tech in their first weekend being ranked, defeated Southern Miss three games to one. It was a very good series for Louisiana Tech. Uh, Arizona had a big upset over Oregon, who had been the, arguably the hottest team in the Pac-12 to start the year. Mm-hmm. Uh, Arizona ends up taking two of three in that series. Uh, Oregon, I believe, won on Sunday to kind of uh, salvage a game in that regards. But a, a lot of competition, like you said, not, not only sweeps outside of the SEC, but some upsets too, which are a little surprising from time to time. But that is college baseball for you. And that's why we love it. No <laughs> doubt about it. <laughs> Well, next week will be another big weekend for college baseball, and be sure to stick around and see our top 25 heading into next week. As always, I am Vinny Servino. He's Brian Sikowski. Thanks so much for joining, Zach. You got it, man. Thanks for having me on. All right.